and oil prices were up in the early trading on Tuesday after OPEC Plus agreed to maintain its existing pact to raise oil outputs by 400,000 barrels per day in November. Well, as at uh, 8.33 GMT, Brent crude, the equivalent of Nigeria's Bonnie Light, was up 0.62% to $81.76 a barrel, while North American West Texas Intermediate was up by 0.40% to about $77.93 a barrel. All right, for more on this, we're now joined from London by a RISE business analyst. Bode or sure some of you. Bode, glad to have you. Uh, quite a while, glad to see your face. Uh, OPEC Plus decided on quarters yesterday. Help us understand why prices responded so aggressively upwards. Well, indeed, uh, prices have been uh, spiking up, even as we speak, as of 10 minutes ago, uh, Brent crude is $82.78. Uh, that's just uh, a few cents shy of 83 uh, dollars up 1.87 percent uh, and i think that the big issue is that there was speculation that opec will do more than 400,000 barrels per day increase that did not happen uh, and that of course triggered uh, a spike and the 400,000 barrels per day that was uh, agreed previously which they uh, kept to was significantly lower than what joe biden had even requested saudi arabia commented that all prices had no reason parabolically like other commod commodities to warrant a change in uh, production. In other words, they would have wanted the prices to go higher uh, before they opened the taps a little bit more, which may still uh, happen. Also, even though prices are facing upward pressures, you know the factors at play are largely transient. For example, the impact of hurricane Ida on U.S. oil and gas infrastructure, that will be sorted out. But for now, uh, U.S. is still struggling to come back fully on stream. And uh, the latest forecasts of economic growth entail uh, downside revisions. And OPEC Plus may have wanted to have a clearer glimpse, uh, especially on demand growth, before increasing quotas at a faster rate. That many are even talking now of uh, even a ninety or even a hundred dollar per barrel. Uh, this might be cherry news for some, but might not be so cherry because we know that here in Nigeria we're allowing the market to determine the price of uh, petrol for individuals. But really, let's talk about the fact that we're seeing these new bullish prices. What is responsible? Well, WTI, that's West Texas Intermediate, so a seven year high. And um, if you look at the graphs, you can see that it's quite steep in an upward direction, which, uh, of course, uh, supports the bullish um, uh, view. The rally has continued for like a third day, just like I said, Brent is very close to $83 already. And uh, Bank of America last week actually predicted a $90 to $100 oil uh, in, in the next uh, six months thereabouts. And they say this will happen uh, because of much higher demand First, as we have more gas to oil substitution due to high gas prices, that they say will create an extra demand of about 2 million barrels per day. The cold winter could also result in another additional demand of 0 0.5 million barrels per day. And the jump in aviation consumption uh, as the economy fully reopens in the first quarter of next year will contribute another half a million barrels uh, per day of extra demand. So they are seeing the demand uh, spiking up significantly. And on the supply side, U.S. oil infrastructure is still coming back gradually. And um, the other thing that is spiking oil prices is liquidity in, in the market. Meanwhile, you know, we also had this oil spill in California, uh, which is also making people a bit uh, careful in, in the near term and people are stocking up. The key parameters to watch is, uh, one, the shale comeback, how quickly uh, U.S. oil will come back. And then, of course, these geopolitical shocks. I hope the winter will not be as cold uh, as they, they say it could be. And, of course, Iran supply. COVID is still something that, that people are still watching. And um, the acceleration of non-fossil fuel, I think, in the short term, has created huge imbalances. And if not properly managed, um, uh, this could still be a concern. But uh, many say these imbalances will fade as uh, more investment goes also into the non-fossil fuel uh, space. As this calls the implication of higher oil prices on both the global economy and markets. 
Well, first on the demand side, definitely when the prices are high, it will reduce demand and incentivize a faster move to alternatives like non-fossil fuels. And um, the other thing on the supply side, it could also incentivize more investment in fossil fuels as the risk uh, return dynamic is more favorable for investors. More share will, of course, come back as the break-even price uh, is, is easily exceeded. On the global economy, high energy costs will stoke higher inflation. We could force a faster interest rate normalization and tapering uh, trajectory that could jolt markets and destabilize central bank monetary uh, policy and you could get some abrupt uh, policy revisions because of that and then of course higher cost of production will weigh on profitability depress output and huge energy importers like india will find their growth slowed down uh, because of uh, this higher cost higher interest rates will also make cost of servicing debts higher especially for economies like nigeria and of course the issue of subsidies will also be a higher fiscal burden. The good thing you've actually touched on subsidy because here in Nigeria, high oil prices actually mean high subsidies and unfortunately incentives for people to even smuggle this product out of the country. I want to get your thoughts on, you know, the conversation about subsidies as it stands right now. Well, high oil prices, like you said, is going to be high motivation for smugglers and the arbitrage opportunities will expand for those who know how to uh, do, do these things. Uh, in the run-up to election, it's unlikely that leadership will have the courage to progress on lifting subsidies. Other analysts have said welfare nets must be significantly upgraded as subsidies are lifted. That means things like decent minimum wage, free affordable public health services, better education, and so on. All these have to be part of the package when you want to remove subsidies. And of course, new refineries like Dangote and the others must also be actively supported so they can become uh, operational uh, as soon as is feasible. So I think it comes with a package where the welfare side and the people side have, has to be carefully uh, addressed just as you are um, increasing uh, the, the costs as a result of removing these subsidies. Okay, Oshazami, for your in-depth analysis tonight, we say thank you so much. Body Arise Business Analyst there all the way from London.